Um, and just to kind of jump into the housing sites portion of the conversation, um, when we are evaluating where sites can go, the first thing that we start with is what is going to be required by the state. So the state has really specific requirements about is there an existing use on a site where you could accommodate that housing, where you could meet that housing, or is that use on the site a barrier? What is some um, examples of potential redevelopment on sites? If the site is too large or too small, it, it won't work for some of our affordable housing. And then also looking at, at the density of housing is another thing that the, that the state looks at. So when they look at density, they see density as a, as a um, as a proxy for affordability and really for because land is so expensive in our community and because construction costs are so expensive um, that it's really hard to develop a single home on a lot that's affordable and so you usually have to have increased density to make that affordable so affordable housing tends to be a denser type of housing um, and that's what this is showing and so we went to the board and planning commission uh, in december and asked for some guidance about how we should go and identify sites and they um, agreed to these guiding principles um, asking us to look at ways that we could ensure that there is housing in all of our communities so that there, it, housing isn't concentrated in any one area that is distributed throughout the county that we really look at racial equity and historic patterns of segregation encouraging infill and redevelopment within our existing communities um, look at environmental hazards that are associated with um, climate change like flooding or fire hazards um, and then looking at any surplus lands and ensuring that we do a, a, a good job around public engagement on the sites um, we've also looked at um, and the type of sites that we looked at were in these different categories and we, we've just first started with like what's the biggest list that we could have of all of the sites that are out there that could help us make housing and now we're going out and asking people for feedback to narrow that, that list down. So we started by looking at where are any vacant sites that are already could zoned for housing, um, are there any projects that have been approved but they haven't been built yet, um, we looked at ways that accessory dwelling units or second units could be one way of meeting some of our housing needs, any publicly owned land that isn't restricted for open space that we could use for housing, um, looking at in increasing densities in existing um, um, residentially zoned areas, um, looking at commercially zoned sites um, to see if there's ways that there could be housing in, in, and that commercial use on the site. We've also looked at some of our religious institutions. Is there a way that they have some excess um, parking lots or other room on the site not to replace that use but to add to it? And then if there's any excess, if there's any school sites that are not being used, whether that could be a source of housing, um, as well as looking at, at um, converting existing um, multi-family um, housing to affordable. Um, and then, so this is, you know, when we looked at the sites that there was that um, preliminary assessment, we looked at all over the county. As you can see, these are, you, there's sites that are throughout the whole county. Um, and we've started with about 150 sites and we have more units on all of those sites um, than we actually need. And so what we're doing is going around and getting feedback on them. Um, and let's see. One of the things that we also have to look at when we're evaluating sites is what the realistic development potential is. You know, there's a lot of steep sites in the county that need to be addressed, uh, et cetera. So we actually have to adjust down what, what our zoning analysis is to ensure that what we're proposing is really realistic development based on what's in our communities. Um, and so when we started, we looked at, you know, here are some different ways, but the bottom line with this slide is we don't have enough sites currently zoned that can meet our lower and moderate income housing. So households, housing that would serve lower and moderate income households, um, we don't have the zoning and sites that could meet that. So we're going to have to do something about that. And that's part of the, the conversation that we're looking at. So um, what we have done is come up with four different ways that kind of focused on four of those um, guiding principles. And each of the kind of sites focuses on, tries to incorporate all of them, but one of those um, scenarios is highlighted. And so for example, in the addressing racial equity and historic patterns of segregation, in that scenario where we have sites, we have said, we're not putting any additional lower income housing in this community because there's already a significant amount of it. And so that, that distinguished it from some of the other scenarios. And Alina is going to talk a little bit more about, about them when we get to that tool of it. 